Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Rucker Navala 2 Gore-Tex jacket. Right, I'm going to get something dealt with right at the start of the video. This jacket costs 1250 quid. It's the new for 2022 Rucker Navala 2 Gore-Tex and it's actually £1,249.99 but when you're spending that sort of money then who really gives a stuff about a penny? Out of the 2,000 or so different textile jackets on our site, only five models cost more than this one. And when people spend that sort of money, they want perfection. So let's have a run through this jacket to see how close it gets to that. The title, I guess, Navala 2, is a bit of a giveaway really that the jacket is actually a sequel. The original Navala had a five year run and it was very, very popular with the riders who bought one. In fact, you might even say it was perfect. 40 customers left a review on our site for their Navala jacket and all 40 of them gave it a perfect five star rating. Now, I spend quite a lot of time rooting through the customer reviews on our site and I've not found anything else that has such a clean record. Normally someone somewhere docks at least one star by the time something like this gets to 40 reviews. This new jacket picks up with the original left off. It combines a robust outer with a three layer Gore-Tex Pro rain protection and a downfield warmth layer that can be worn separately. Pretty much every imaginable feature for a motorcycle jacket is here. So let's run through it in detail and show you what you get for your money. The outer is made from 500 denier stretch Cordura. That gives the jacket very good flexibility. And it means you could try on a size smaller than you'd usually take as the stretch may well be forgiving enough to cope with that. There are reinforcements of armor core over the top at the shoulders and the elbows, which are your most likely impact points if things go wrong on a ride out. Armor core is made from weaving Cordura and Kevlar together and textiles don't come much tougher. You wouldn't want a whole suit made from it, but in key zones like these, it's very reassuring to have that protection. That stretch in the main material makes it very comfortable and flexible, certainly more so than many Gore-Tex Pro jackets. That lack of flexibility is one of the most common criticisms of Gore-Tex Pro, but I found this one gave me no concerns in that regard. The fact it's Gore-Tex Pro means the rain defences also are about as solid as it gets. When it's Pro, that means the membrane's laminated to the outer shell, and that means it can repel water straight away. When it's a separate liner on the inside of the jacket. It has to wait for rain to soak through the outer before it can get into the game. But on this, it can get straight in there to keep you dry. It also means the venting can be loads more effective. In a normal jacket, if you open up a vent, the air has to pass through a waterproof membrane before it can get through to your skin. It does cool the jacket in general, but it doesn't give you that refreshing flow of cooling air that comes straight through to your body. With a pro jacket like this, opening a vent pulls the membrane apart and the air can then flow almost unhindered through. There's usually a thin lining in between, but nothing substantial. The vents at the collarbones of this jacket let you see it best. If you open it up, you'll see there's a light Airtex mesh in there that maintains the integrity, but it won't stop the air from flowing. As well as these vents, you get long ones on the arms just here, down each side of the torso, at the hips, and then also two on the back. When I wore this jacket, it was still pretty chilly out, so I didn't really need vents open to cool down, but I did open them up to find out how effective they were. And let's just say I shut them again pretty quickly as they work very well at drawing in the airflow. Now, one thing we always have to bear in mind with direct vents like these, if air can get through there, then rain can too. So if it starts raining, make sure you shut the vents or you're gonna get wet. A lot of top end jackets like this will have plenty of fit adjusters all across them, but on the Navala 2, they're only at the waist. There's a Velcro tab at the base just here, and then you can also use the two-way zip on this vent to open this up and it becomes an expansion pleat. But remember, if you do that, then you've got the vent open and then this section is no longer waterproof. The main fastener on this jacket is pretty conventional, really. It's a zip behind this substantial storm flap that Velcros over the top to stop rain reaching the zip. Now, this is one of the differences over the original Navala jacket, which had a waterproof zip that didn't need this extra protection of a storm flap. I didn't notice any complaints in the customer reviews about the rain protection on the original, but waterproof zips have a habit of being a bit sticky and also they're not all that flexible when they're done up. So an arrangement like this with the storm flap, it might take a little bit longer to use each time you put the jacket on and take it off. But for me, I think it's an improvement over what Rucker had before. At the collar, it's pretty simple as well. It's a Velcro fastener that you secure around the neck. If you don't want it fastened, there's a Velcro patch on the inside that lets you fold this over on itself and that stops the rough bit sticking to your lid lining. Rucker necklines tend to run a bit high and I found this jacket to be the same, so it's ideal really for rough weather. The top section of it is made from neoprene so it can sit quite close to your neck and still be flexible and obviously that makes it really good at repelling rain. 
Now, another change from the original Navala is the additional rain cover that comes out from the collar. On the old one, you could zip it on or off depending on the weather, but quite a few people zipped it off and then they couldn't find it when they wanted to zip it back on again. And Rucker didn't make the extra collars to be able to sell them as accessories. So to get around that issue with the new jacket, the extra collar is now permanently attached. And what you do is you just roll it up and tuck it inside the main collar. The cuffs with this jacket, they're a classic Rucker design. The idea is that you put your glove over this thin inner cuff here, and then you zip the main jacket over the top of your glove. Having it like this means water runs off the jacket and over the top of the glove rather than getting inside the glove. And then once your glove does get wet on the outside of the glove, this barrier here blocks the water that's soaked into your glove and stops it getting back up inside your jacket and making your clothes on the inside wet. I've got loads of experience of different types of cuff designs over the years and I find this twin cuff design to be the best for staying dry when it's absolutely stinking wet outside. So the last thing to deal with on the outside, that's the pockets. You've got one at each hip and then there's the classic document pocket at the lower spine. All three of them are marked as water resistant. They're all Gore-Tex lined and they have the same sealed zips as the vents. So in theory, if you keep them done up properly, I would say your stuff will most likely stay dry in those pockets, even if they're called water resistant rather than waterproof. So let's move to the inside of this jacket. If you open up the main zip, the first thing you'll see is the chest protector. It's included as standard and it's a substantial D3 O protector that meets the basic level one of the CE impact protection standard. If for some reason that's unfathomable to me, you don't want impact protection across this area of your body, then you can take this protector out and the pocket it sits in will fold in on itself and it won't get in your way anymore. This is part of a full set of D3O armor in this jacket. The shoulder and elbow armor meets the higher level two of the CE standard, and it also covers a greater area than you get in most jackets. So this is D3O's normal shoulder protector, and this is the normal elbow protector. And in this jacket, you get this size of shoulder protector and this size of elbow protector, which shows you just how much extra coverage you're getting from this jacket over the normal D3O protection. There's also a D3O back protector insert included as standard with this jacket, and that also meets the higher level two of the CE protection standard. So while we're dealing with protection and CE, let's look at the overall safety certification for this jacket. Now, Rucker have only just started having their products approved to the CE standard that most manufacturers have now adopted. They've had this one approved to level A, which is the most basic of the three levels within that standard. There's one internal pocket with this jacket. It's a Napoleon pocket that sits just behind the main zip here and it's massive so there's plenty of room inside there for a wallet and a phone and there's also a pouch within it so you can keep those two separate and all bits and bobs separate from each other if you find that easier if you're concerned about these outer pockets only saying they're water resistant then this one is the pocket to use as it sits behind the waterproof membrane and it's pretty much guaranteed to keep your stuff dry as for a thermal liner rucker have followed their recent trend by giving you a separate warm jacket that can be worn underneath this one's filled with a mix of down and feathers like other Rucker under jackets, but the outer material on this one's different. This one has a more subtle matte finish than the shiny ones that you got in other recent Rucker jackets. So jackets like this are called destination layers. The idea is that you've got a jacket that you can wear on its own when you get to where you're going at the end of a day's riding. It saves having to carry a casual jacket with you in your luggage on a trip. You just wear this one or you just keep it in your luggage so that you can either use it on or off the bike. There's a carry sack in one of the pockets for that. So if you do need to carry it with you, then you can roll it up, pull it tight in that little pocket, and then it will take up less room. Last things with the interior are the ways of stopping this jacket riding up. The first is the crotch strap. The idea is to unfurl it from its housing at the back of the jacket, feed it between your legs, and then attach it to this plastic loop inside the front of the jacket. I have never used one of these straps, and I intend for it to stay that way forever. As well as that method, there's the fairly conventional long zip that attaches to Rucker's trousers. There are matching Navala 2 trousers available, which have a similar construction to the jacket, and they're available in three different leg lengths. Those are a penny shy of 900 quid for a pair, which means a Navala 2 Gore-Tex combo jacket and jeans comes in at 2,150 pounds. You probably don't need me to tell you that's a lot of money, and you definitely don't need me to tell you whether or not you can justify spending that amount of money on bike kit. But what I can tell you is that this kit is really comfortable, it's really flexible, has a very reassuring and comprehensive set of impact protectors, and it will offer brilliant rain protection. So I've not used this one in terrible rain, but I have enough knowledge of Gore-Tex Pro jackets to know that this jacket will repel it. 
I've used this one in temperatures sinking down to single digits in Celsius and that inner jacket kept me comfortably warm. I wore this jacket on my Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and it gave me the freedom to move around on the bike as well. So it doesn't have that bulky feel that some touring jackets have, especially if they've got Gore-Tex Pro like this one. This is a great bike jacket if you can afford it and if you want to afford it. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Rucker Navala 2 Gore-Tex jacket. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.